Well, a new box has arrived yesterday, present for me, almost as good as Christmas. Unison pastels. I love them. They've been my favourite pastels for most of my artistic career. I do use other ones. I use some cheaper inscribes and colours that are harder. Um, some of the harder pastels, the harder the pastel, usually the less of the quality. So soft pastels usually have much better quality and are more expensive. But the hard pastels sometimes are necessary. For most of the work I do, I like soft pastels. And they're really, for me, are only two on the market. Um, there are many, many makes of pastels, very well-known pastels, but they're usually much smaller in paper, and I need pastels that I can take the paper off and use in much larger, looser ways. So I use quite a lot of different pastels, um, but my favourite and top of the list are the Unisons, in fact. Um, there are some very other good pastels on the market, budget pastels, um, but for me, for all of these years, these are the most consistent, and they have beautiful darks as well. I've recently managed to get another company to bring some more darks in, but they're still not quite as soft as I need yet, because I tend to use pastels in very versatile ways. I tend to use them with water as well. And for that, we need a very soft pastel. Now, for the very bright colours of pastel, we usually do have to buy the um, cheaper pastels, because most of the companies don't do fluorescent or very bright pastels. For instance, if I open this little box here, and you can see it's a well-used box, and all of the... Uh, papers have been taken off from all of the covers, there are some very, very bright pastels in this range. If I just show you close up, you can see bright, garish pinks and other bright colours that I've got in here, um, which you cannot get with the normal ranges of pastels. And you'll see there then that I've taken off the papers off the pastels, because when they come, they come like that, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, aren't they? Uh, almost a shame to use them, one doesn't really want to. It's nice to have just a display box like that. But, dare I say it, I'm going to have to remove all of these outside paper covers from my pastels because if you want to use pastels fully, you need to be able to use them with the outside edge as well, not just the tips. So, nuisance as it is, and uh, disappointing in a way because it looks so attractive that way, if I leave those papers on, I know that I'm going to just use the tips and I won't be loose enough with them. Well, it saves you getting your fingers messy, of course. Uh, you don't get to the mess of your fingers so much that way. But really, that doesn't bother me too much. So I will remove all those papers shortly, having photographed them already. Here's the full list of pastels that I use. Here's the full series. And I'll do it bit by bit. Here's the whole sheet. And then here's single parts of it bit by bit to so get a very good idea. And you'll see in this box that I advise, I've got, showing you there, I've got um, four whites and four blacks in because we do tend to use some more of the darks. I do tend to mix some darks, I do tend to have some um, deep colours and blacks down there. But I also have some very deep purples in that set, deep browns and deep blues as well. And I find that with this particular set, I can do absolutely every subject there is. I mean, I've got all my warm and cool yellows, my turquoise is my warm and cool blues, right through to the purples and the deep mauves and the different greens. I think, you know, it's a lot of money to spend out for somebody to invest in in many ways, but uh, they will last a good long time. And depending on the techniques you're using as to how long they last, for instance, um, if I use on watercolour paper with water, I don't use as much because I stain the paper very quickly and they tend to. Uh, give a good ground for the overpainting because once they've been mixed with water they're fixed. So but if I was using them on glass paper or a technique like that I would use an awful lot more and it, it eats it up, literally sucks it up. So if you're using the pastel in the old English method, block and blending on say an ongris paper or a pastel paper, it doesn't use quite as much, on watercolour paper with water not quite as much, not too much on a velvet paper, um, but it does use a lot on the rougher papers and papers such as glass paper. 
So there they are. We've got different sorts of pastels. Um, we've got the uh, we've got the cheaper ones, the inscribes, and the bright colours. Um, it's the harder ones, so they can be very useful. And if I were going to use those, I'd normally use them towards the end because if you use them on wet paper or damp paper, they'll tear the surface. They'll cut in like a knife. Whereas these soft ones won't. Remember that all pastels are basically is gum arabic with some pigment, a bit like watercolour, but it's a coarser watercolour. So they're only semi-transparent or they're fairly opaque paints if they're used with water. Um, but they are much more versatile than you think, pastels. So if we use pastel with water at first and then let it dry, we can build up layers afterwards, they'll be fixed, and we can use the harder inscribes or the cheaper pastels at the very end when the paper is dry. You can use them over other mediums as well. I use them over acrylic inks or over even thin acrylic paint on watercolour paper. I use acrylic inks and then work the pastels over the top of those bright acrylic inks to get really vibrant flower scenes and so on. We can be mixed media with them, but of course they have to go on to a matte surface. You do need a surface with a bit of a bite to it. Remember that most pastel papers have an orange peel side and a smoother side. It isn't the orange peel side you normally use unless you want that orange peel effect, which can be rather distracting. It, the bite is no different. The, the, the orange peel surface on a pastel paper is not the, um, the bite of the paper. The bite of the paper is the actual surface itself. So I mean, in watercolour paper, I often use a hot press, and it takes the pastel perfectly well, especially with water, especially once you've given a ground of pastel as well. Remember that hardly any paper is light fast or colour fast. Um, that they will change in the sunshine. So if you're going to use a coloured pastel paper, um, then later on that ch the colour values might change. So it might be wiser in many cases to use um, a, a paint or an ink over the surface or even block and blend over the surface with a pigment that won't change as easily. Um, I have done tests with most pastels, I have done tests with unisons, and even these high quality pigments will change slightly if left in direct sunlight. You try this sometime, put some paint and some pastels onto a piece of paper and then cover half of it and leave that in the sunlight for a few weeks and just see direct strong sunlight to see if the colours change slightly. It will happen because you're not, most, you're not really meant to leave paintings in strong sunlight, it's not a good idea anyway. When you hang them on a wall you don't want to be in direct sunlight. But you know they will fade so I'm suggesting that if you're going to want a coloured background for your pastels that you don't really want to use the papers that they will fade, although it is very acceptable, that you might want to tint a paper um, with paint or acrylic inks or even use a wash of pastel finely rubbed in or with water even so that it dries as a ground. Just tips to give you. Bits of your old pastel when you finish with them, um, especially if it's the same sort of pastel, not a good idea to do this with mixing pastels, but keep the same types of pastels. If you've got little bits left over, grind them all up into a powder and then mix with a little water and roll them into a sausage and you'll find that you, when it dries out you'll have another grey to your pastel. You won't have wasted all the bits and pieces, it will make another pastel because the pigment is only the gum arabic which mixes with water, which is why we can use them with water, they're water soluble. So here we are then, the range that I advise, the range that I suggest of my unison pastels, absolutely gorgeous things. So yes, we can get cheaper pastels, we can get more budget pastels, but for the highest quality out and for value for money, I think we cannot beat the unisons actually. There are smaller pastels which are equally as good, but they aren't as nice and big as chunky as these are. Remember that also these are made in England, they're made in Yorkshire, so it's nice to buy from home as well, isn't it? Uh, they also come in these attractive boxes. Now you can get the smaller boxes and you can buy many people of their own sets, preferable preference sets that they like. I possibly will look at a set of these doing a smaller set later to advise um, because I know this is a lot of money to spend out on a big set. So we could go down just to a very basic set and I'll look at doing that later. And we'll see if we can advise you just a basic set to buy to, to keep you going to get, to, to get you started. Basic primary colours would do, wouldn't they? But remember there are many colours that you cannot mix and that is the point of using some of these cheaper ones here which are more fluorescent because you cannot mix those colours, you know, they have to be pure and bright. And if you want these really bright colours for flowers and things, that's when you're going to need them. Okay, I'll put together a little basic set for you in just a moment, and we'll photograph that. And this is a quick introduction, and there are many, many films I've got on here on my YouTube channel, um, which show the use of pastels, and show it in all of those different ways as well. And of course, from my own website, um, peterwoodarts.com, 
you can go to my link on my films and you will find I've got entire foundation videos on the use of pastels, two, two discs at a time, double discs and so on, where I show an example of, for example, of different ways of working with these pastels. So you've got the free films on here and then you've got the more advanced ones on the high quality um, DVDs that I produce as well. That is of sunsets, as the sun goes down 10 minutes at a time, we would produce six or eight of these uh, as, as the sun gradually goes down. That's in a standard um, Ongres pad that size. Here's a couple of them now. These were done in series as the sun went down of a lot Lomond. Done this many, many times, 10 minutes literally using these techniques. This is block and blend. is very very quick as well um, so these methods are very very fast work very very loosely at first as I tend to do and then tighten up at the end and that's completely up to you then isn't it you're in control right here you are here's some examples
perhaps it might be helpful if I went through some of my colours with you. You can actually see the numbers on here now. I've put them almost in order of my preference. If you were going to need to buy pastels, and what I would suggest, and I would work with going upwards here. Remember that there are many colours in life that you cannot mix. They need to come directly from being produced. In other words, some pinks and so on and turquoise is very hard to actually make. So although we can make most of our colours using this series here, for instance, we can make the orange here by using those two, um, it is much brighter and clearer to have the pastel straight off and clean and much cleaner. So I'm starting off here with the white, which just says white, and then there's their black, which is grey 36. This lovely rich red, which is like a cadmium red, which is the A15. There's a middle yellow, like a cadmium yellow here, the A12. Then there's the ultramarine blue, or it's sort of in between cobalt and ultramarine here, the BV12. And I have an awful lot of these different turquoises. I find them really, really useful for cools, uh, cool greens in both foliage grasses and also in tropical um, seas and the Caribbean and so on. Um, we get some wonderful uh, wonderful variations of cools and warm blues in colours. I like this, I like the difference, I need the difference in my cool and warm colours. We go then to a cooler yellow, it's a cream, and a strong bright leaf green which is the green 29, so we've got the Y6 for the cream there, green 29 there, A36 for a deep purple, A43 for a very deep green, then a Venetian red or burnt sienna if you like, RE11, and then a nice very light blue, because we're going to need that for skies and for highlighting, BG6. Then there's a, a lovely rich pink here, red 11. We come down to a very deep blue, which we're going to need, BV18. An orange here, A13. A light purple, BV5. And of course, you're going to need yellow ochre, Y2. We've got a whole series of greys amongst my um, amongst my collection here. If I come up a bit, you can see the variety of greys I've got, which range from the cool greys to the warmer greys, so the cool bluer grey there to the warmer grey here, to a very warm grey there, and through to the, the much bluer greys there. So a great variety of greys for skies, and, and some of the background landscape work as well. So come back down to these again. Worked our way through now to these different greys, the cooler and warmer greys as we go on. Great for skies and of course certainly for landscapes. A warmer uh, cream, a much warmer cream still, a little red added to it. A mid-green here, that's green 26. Got grey 26 there, but all of these will be listed. T6, A49, green 21. Come through to our mid-foliage green, green 26 here, T6, A49, the the very deep, deep blue here, very, very deep blue, that one, very, very handy blue. And we'll come across to our lighter green here. It's not as bright as the one we had earlier, but green 28, a very useful one. And the various blues we've got, working in between the turquoises and the grey blues. Um, we've, got, we've got BG7 there, BG5, and a mid-blue here, which is more like a cobalt blue. Um, then we've got the more turquoise, BG8, and again a warmer cream, A7, T1 here for a deep green turquoise, great for those um, shadows in, in leaf structures. And this very bright orange, which is a very useful one for us, for flowers especially, or for sunlight over landscape, Y9. A5, a nice light purple, grey 11's there, A14, a much brighter red, almost a scarlet rather than the cadmium red we saw earlier, a lovely light cream, Y5. Moving up here again to our various greys, and we've got the difference in the warm and the cool greys here. You see ranging from the cooler bluer greys going through to greener and browner greys here. Look at the variety of those. We've got grey 32, grey 3, grey 5, grey 33, BGE, so a blue grey, 7, BG12, A41 is a much warmer browner grey, Y18 a nice um, golden cream, grey 9, Grey 9 there, a nice blue-grey, and a much warmer, more purpley grey, grey 8, A44, and um, green 13 there, a green greys, a mid-deep green. But going up above it, and a very important one to have here, green 1, which is a nice, lovely, deep, rich, almost viridian green, coming across here to, to green 27. 
Coming back to my deeper blues here, A50 and A49 for the deeper blues, for shadows and backgrounds. Coming across then to pink and reds, very useful warm rose reds, red 6, red 12. And a very important one here, which possibly could be down lower, but a lovely rich burnt umber B18. And then a whole series of turquoise here is again BG14, T5, T2, T4. And up here, just one more turquoise to go, B10, and then we're back to our whites, except for one here, which is grey too. So a slightly more off-white cream. Right, there's all my basics of all I ever need. This set will do everything you want. So you can make the choices of which colours you want from that to make up your own sets. Again, I'm suggesting that the basic sets are here, and as I go up, then there'll be more colours that I'm going to definitely need. But possibly the BE18, the brown, needs to be down amongst these. Right, this will probably make more sense to you now. Uh, we can see the colours without all the bits of paper on them. And you can see the various colour hues as we go through from the warmer to the cooler blues. Here the greener tint of grey blue, a lighter pale sky blue there. And then the much, much richer down here, ultramarine blue and so on. But what I did want to show you up here was these cheaper, um, brighter pastels. And you can see what I mean about these very bright, cheaper sort of inscribed colours or the cheaper pastels which supply us with these bright fluorescent colours that you can't get at the moment in the more expensive ones. And different situations in which they can be used as well. It's, uh, I'll show you one or two shots of my using them all around the world from volcano tops to painting the Matterhorn to uh, working in snow. There's all sorts of ways we can use them. I even remember using some in Norway with water and the water was freezing onto the paper with snow and making some wonderful effects when it actually melted out and dried later. Gave an effect you can't get in any other way. So perhaps worth experimenting and exploring with.